Earlier this year, we took a look at the first full alpha build of Starlight River, and as someone who plays a lot of modded Terraria, so much of it blew my mind. But unfortunately, that day one build was full of bugs. And since then, the developers have released a couple of updates that have added some new weapons to the mod. And so today, I'm going to be revisiting this mod and figuring out, was it all hype at the time or does it hold up? And since a lot of the new weapons are summoner, I'm going to be playing as a summoner. Okay, so here we are. It's been about four, maybe five months since we last checked out the mod. And weirdly, it all feels nostalgic. I just want to draw your attention immediately to the artwork. Like, look at these bushes. Look how they sway in the breeze. Look at these light rays. Look at the atmosphere. Yeah, Starlight River really knows how to make an impression straight out of the gate. Now, thankfully, since I last checked out this mod, somebody has gone ahead and made a wiki. So my plan to play as a summoner might not be awful. And I'm really happy about that. And also, since I do know a little bit more about the mod than when I last played, since I played blind, I now know the progression of the bosses. So that little squid boss, I say little, it's quite large. Uh, he's, well, you're meant to do that around the Eye of Cthulhu. So first Terraria craft, and now this. Why am I always getting gnomed? What is this about? I thought these were meant to be rare. Now, I believe the first summoning weapon we need to go for is made with some of this pale stone and then also silver bars. So I'm going to be on the lookout as I explore this initial cave for any kind of ore. And I also think there's a whip as well that's made of copper or tin. But I am really excited to play as a summoner because I think when I made that initial video, I only really stuck to the range weapons since uh, they're kind of like the old reliable, aren't they? And I've been on a real summoner's kick recently ever since learning that 1.4.5 is adding new whips and the mushroom boy. I want to experience as much as I can about summoner today so that I can appreciate summoner in the future. Does that make sense? Does anybody play Terraria like that? Now, since the first modded boss isn't until the Eye of Cthulhu, my initial plan is to try and check out any of the new weapons I haven't already seen before then, but then also just explore, get Hermes boots, a band of regeneration, all that good stuff. What is this? Oh wait, I think I might remember this. Okay, there's a whirlwind like ability that you get at a certain point in the mod and you can break these, which I don't think I showed in that first video. Now I will admit this threw me off for a quick second because I don't think I actually saw one of these in my video. But I think they are little gauntlet rooms because if I remember right, I think I saw Python do one of these. It's like a, a trial by enemies. So we'll come back when we've got some loot. Okay, so the first weapon we want to make is the Pale Nail, which is 12 tungsten bars and some of this block, which we already have. We are prepared. And then I think the other thing we want to make is a whip that's made from copper bars. Here it is. It's the copper coil. So this is made from seven bars and five cobwebs, which is really cheap. And as well, you don't even need like an anvil to, to make it. So that's probably going to be our first summoning weapon then. Five summon damage, 10 critical strike damage, strikes nearby enemies with static electricity, which sounds really cool. Okay, let's give it a go. We've got some enemies here. Oh, that's quite neat. Oh, I quite like that. Just like everything else in Starlight River, uh, very visual. Like the electric bolts are just... They're not Terraria-like, but they're just cool. 20 summon damage, 40 critical strike chance, summons the Pale Knight. Oh, look at that. It's, it's a little Hollow Knight. Oh, that's quite cool. Look at his little, like, sword swish. I haven't played a lot of Hollow Knight. I'm just going to be honest with you. Fake fan, all right? But I like the design. That's cool. I love how it, how it bounces on their head. Oh, that's actually golden. And you know what? Combined with this whip, it's a good little starter set. You know, if we were playing just vanilla Terraria, we'd have to walk across the world and get a Finch Staff, or we'd have to die a bunch of times and get like a, an Abigail Flower. No, 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 right? We're, we're getting started with this. The Snooball is definitely one of my favorite enemies that they've added. I just think it's really neat. Um, also, I could see a little twinkle down here. So I'm going to check what that is. If I remember right, this this might be the thing that like leads you to the boss or something like that. Uh, no, it is not. It is something else. What is that? Um, please, you can go into my inventory if you'd like. <laughs> oh, there we go. Uh, Aquamarine Pendant, plus 15 barrier. Losing all of your barrier releases ice shards. 
So when we initially played the mod, we couldn't use anything like this uh, because the barrier system or like the UI, the way it warps around the player was broken. So I just ended up turning it off. Oh yeah, okay, right. This is the thing that leads you to the boss. Uh, you're meant to like interact with it. And then I think you mine down and follow it. Something like that. Mead horn, equipable. Potions last 50% longer. Wow, that is actually quite cool. Oh, okay, all right. Uh, flurry boots, and you can pick two of these. That's quite cool. I don't think there was chests here last time we played. Uh, so I will take healing potions and a diamond. Why not? <laughs> That's so cool. So it's like you don't even have to, to really go hunting for accessories. You know, this mod's just like got the hook up. Suspicious looking offering. Drop in prismatic waters to summon the one the squidities worship. That's cool as well. I don't remember getting one of these. I think I actually, I think I, I crafted it last time I played. That's what I, that's what I remember at least, all right? That's, that's my narrative. Gosh, it's so cool. I don't know when they made these changes, but it, it's so streamlined. Like, I don't remember the mining buff, and I don't remember the chests, and I feel like it just, I don't know, it guides the player a lot quicker to where you want them to be. Whoa, what is this? Soul nibblers. What? <laughs> what are they? Oh, they're horrible. Horrible soul nibblers, what a name. So I'm just working on some houses, and I've also done a little bit of reading. Now, it turns out, there is actually a summoner set in Starlight River that we can get. You get it from the King Slime. So my plan is we're going to go underground. I'm going to get some gems. I'm going to make sure that we have a hook so that we can do the fight. I'll probably go back to the ice biome, get a Flink's coat so that we have a little bit of summoning armor. And then uh, we'll put Hollow Knight and our whip to the test and we'll get that armor. Wow, take a little look at this. Look how cool this is. What even is it? It's like a, a little hot springs, it's a little sauna. You know, if I take a dip in that water, I come out rejuvenated, refreshed, I'll be very pleased. Am I, am I rejuvenated? Is my health going, oh, I actually am. Refreshing dip, the hot springs restores your body and mind. The way the background music just disappears as well, and it's just the sound of water. Why did they make this? Why is this like weirdly wholesome? I'm hoping that we'll just kind of wing this and then we'll get a free set of armor. It's very optimistic, right? This is expert mode uh, King Slime at the end of the day, but we are using uh, modded items. What I do like is this gives us a real chance now to see just how powerful the Pale Nail really is. And it seems like, to be completely honest, it's kind of holding its own. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep working my way to the right, hoping that enemies on the left despawn, and maybe, if I am lucky, we will make it through to the very end. Okay, there we go. All right, okay, cool. So I wonder if it's just a... Uh, in the treasure bag then. I kind of thought it'd just drop on the floor. <laughs> All right, so let's see. We got some gelatin. That is for uh, for cooking. Uh, let's open it up then. Bam. What do we get? I got nothing. Ah, okay, right. So it's just rare. Right. Okay, that's good. For a moment, I was like, well, this has derailed everything. So we have the headpiece, which gives two defense and 10% increased summoning damage. We have the chest piece, which gives four defense and 5% increased summoning damage, and you can summon an additional minion, and the leggings, which gives three defense, and it says minions inflict 5% exposure. Press up for more info. Uh, okay. Exposure multiplies the amount of damage a target takes by their exposure value before consuming the effect. So, moving it on over then, uh, we have 19 defense, so the exact same as, um, look at the little slime! Oh, it's amazing! It's the same as Ninja Set. Um, set bonus, a slime prince followed you around, double tap down to fuse with the prince. You can control the prince during this time. The prince takes damage instead of you during this time. Oh, that's ace. <laughs> that's so cool. Now, in terms of progression, I'd say we're about ready for the Eye of Cthulhu, which means we're about ready for our first modded boss fight. But before we do that, let's check out these gauntlets because I never got the chance to actually check these out and I'm quite excited. All right, how do you activate them? Oh, I think that was it. <laughs> it might actually be that simple. 
Okay, so obviously we do have this armor and we do have our little pale knights. Let's actually test what it's like to merge with the actual prince line. It's quite cool. You can see it's got its own little health bar uh, and you get a good bit of mobility. I feel like it's quite, genuinely quite powerful. Yeah, it's good. So this little gauntlet so far is uh, it's not too bad. Oh, and there we go. Oh, is that easy? Wow, you get good stuff from that. Uh, so we got a dull blade. It's a material, ancient and heavily worn, but still solid. You could forge this into something useful. Uh, a spear and a cloud in a bottle. Place blocks on blue squares. Now I'm gonna try and remember this because when I last fought this, I didn't really pick up on the fact that that's what you're meant to do during the fight. So here it is. And this for me is what makes Starlight River like completely next level. Like, look at the artwork. Look at the presentation. Sense the vibe. You know, this is... It's actually wild. It genuinely is wild. This... Like, I've played so much Terraria. This this isn't like Terraria that you've seen before. It's so cool. Okay, so I think we throw that into there. And then it begins. Oh, nice. <laughs> I almost already died because the camera kind of messed me a little bit. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Well, I almost fell into the water. And listen, I'm not a very confident swimmer. Okay, so we are relying on summons for this fight, which might be a little hard because as you can see, uh, the little tentacles that come up, you've got to make sure you're actually hitting them. So you don't take contact damage uh, from the... I don't know. What would you call this? The head? <laughs> the head of the squid? Okay, this one's the one we need to attack. Pale Knight, please get on it. This is honestly so cool. This for me, when, when I started this video and I said, was it was it all, you know, was the hype justified? When I see this, I'm like, oh yeah, yeah it was. <laughs> you know, I almost came into this video kind of knowing the answer really. Oh, I've gone into the water. Get me out of here. I love the I love the swimming animation. It's so I don't know. It's just so weird. It's, it doesn't feel like Terraria, but as I've said like a million times, that's what makes it cool. Okay, uh, how do I do this? Uh, oh, I kind of get it. I kind of don't. I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm winging it a little bit. So I have got low health, which isn't ideal. Before we go back and refight the boss, I wanted to get a little more health, but I have found a new item. This is called a sliver ring. A small snake occasionally attacks with you when you use a whip. So this goes with our summoner build. Let's try not die this time. Although I've already kind of butchered that. Hopefully my summons can do the rest for me though. Uh, it seems like genuinely this little combination with our whip and our summon and our extra snake thing, it, it's good. It's actually, it's doing us pretty good. Uh, I am not good at dodging that at all. Okay, so less than 500 health to go. Uh, can we survive? I will say that attack where it, it spawns the, the little white specters. I don't know what to call them. It's really hard to dodge, or at least that's what it is for me. And there we go. Wow. The artwork in this mod is just incredible. I feel like... My conclusion on Starlight River, having now replayed a good chunk of it, is it's perfect. It's actually perfect. The thing is, it doesn't add a lot yet because it isn't done, but everything it adds is a 10 out of 10. It is so polished and such detail and love has been given to this mod. I I'm in awe. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, we're, we're doing the Eye of Cthulhu, everyone. That's right. It's a naturally spawned Eye of Cthulhu. Well, this is all right. Um, yeah, I think if we can take down a big squid, we can definitely take down the Eye of Cthulhu. Now, I can't remember. Are we meant to do the Goblin Army before we do the next boss? Are we meant to get, like, proper accessory upgrades? I think we probably are. Oh, yeah, this is the way to do it. Yeah, the Slime Prince armor is actually so sick. I love that little extra mobility. Okay, there we go. Well, that was, uh, that was all right. <laughs> it was pr pretty easy, not gonna lie. All right, so let's see what we got in the treasure bag. Um, also, what is this? What are you? <laughs> Why do we have a big giant banner just floating around? It's fine. It's gone. Uh, so opening it up, bam. What do we get? We got the plated mantis technique. Uh, material teaches you the art of the sword, granting all sword weapons a new combo attack. Uh, right click to parry, 
reflecting projectiles. Pretty cool. Oh, okay. So we got the tank-like Aurora Crown. 49 summon damage. 84 critical strike damage. Uh, equipable. Combat mount. Summons an Aurora Throne. Lashes out with whip-like appendages. Right-click to summon explosive Auroralings. Uh, okay. Oh, so it's a mount. Interesting. What is, what is that? Oh, it's wild. It's like a little squiddy hover car. <laughs> oh, what is this? And these are its, its two attacks. So this is the right click one. And uh, yeah, it's, it, it is what it is. So we also got the squid fins. Uh, equipable. Allows you to swim like a jelly squid. Very cool. Uh, and we also got the tentalance. Oh, okay, right, I get you now. So, if you have nothing in your inventory, this is the weapon that, that fires out? Oh, gosh, that is wild. Let's make our second summoning weapon. This one is apparently called the Man-Eater Pot. It's made with jungle spores and vines, and I think that's it. Oh, there it is. Man-Eater Pot. So, 8 summon damage, 14 critical strike damage, causes man-eaters to sprout from your head... These man-eaters will consume heart pickups to empower themselves. Consumed heart pickups heal you after a delay. Wow, that's really neat. It's a very, it's a strange concept. Uh, so let's give it a go. Let's spawn it. Actually, let's get rid of Pale Knight. Let's spawn it in. We can have two. Oh, look at that. <laughs> that's amazing. So you just have a little pot on your head. And, it, and, that, and that's it. And they just eat hearts and, and enemies. No, that's really cool. Quite like, genuinely, I quite like that. So I just read on the wiki, there's another whip that we can make, but you need to get an item from ghosts, I think. And I think the easiest way to spawn ghosts is to make a graveyard. So 12 summon damage, 22 critical strike damage, chains enemies together, sharing summon damage between them. Hold and release right click to snare enemies near your mouse to the ground. Chaining all affected enemies. Uh, I have no idea what it really means by that, but it sounds very cool. We'll give it a go. Uh, so this is, wow. Now that looks good. That looks very good. So yeah. Oh, okay. So when an enemy's near you, you right click. I'm guessing there's a charge on that. That's so cool. So we have one boss remaining, but if I remember right, we have like a little gauntlet that we're meant to do before we get to do the boss. And it's going to be really cool because we've got our new summoned weapon. We have our new whip that chains enemies to the ground like this. How cool is this? Yeah, we are going to absolutely crush this gauntlet. It's going to be sick. We've found the custom area underneath the desert. And if you haven't played Starlight River before, prepare to have your mind blown. Look how cool this looks. Oh, it's amazing. So just a little bit of history. Back in the day, uh, this was like the little demo level. So it's a, it's a pre-made structure, uh, there's an area to fight a boss, and there's also like an NPC to talk to, he's called the Glass Weaver, and he is going to give us uh, like a trial to do. So I'm going to skip over the story a little bit, only because I've already done it. Essentially, to beat the boss over there, we need a key for the temple below, and to prove that we can get the key, uh, he is going to give us a trial. But look at this, look how cool this is. It's not Terraria. It's not. It's amazing. It, it makes me so happy playing this mod. Like, as somebody who's just played a lot of Terraria, seeing fresh things like this is just so cool. Um, I might need to get rid of these. I think these guys are just really sluggish and slow. Okay, let's spawn in two of these instead and see how my Pale Knights do. Yeah, I think they're going to do loads better. Yeah, they are. I think I can spawn in the second one now. There we go. Oh, look at that. I really like this, though. I really like the fact that the whip just chains them down to the floor. I think that's kind of sick. So if I remember right, this little trial that we're doing right here does genuinely just get harder and harder. It's not easy at all. So definitely make sure that you are prepared for the boss because the boss itself is quite a tricky boss, I would say. Obviously, if you've played a lot of modded Terraria, like I have, it's not too bad. But it definitely isn't easy. Like, I died on it a good few times. Also, I really like how these enemies make a, a big shielded wall while this one tries to snipe you. 
It's so class. I actually love it so much. Oh yeah, we should uh, we should use this as well and uh, and experience uh, the little like thingies. Oh <laughs> well. All right, might have been bad timing to do that. Earlier, I was saying, I don't know if I need to do the goblin army and get the goblin tinkerer and whatnot, but I feel like the gauntlet has pretty much answered the question for me. The thing is, I think I just need better movement. I think if we had better movement, our summon and our whip could handle it. Uh, but until then, this is what the plan is. Now, I won't lie, Glassweaver's gauntlet was a bit of a letdown to show off this weapon, so let's see it in action. Oh my gosh, I love it. It's great. All right, so Tinkerer's Workshop, Rocket Boots. I think that's it. Uh, do you know what? I probably could have done with getting some reforges. Actually, do you know what? Demolitionist, it's time to get the boot. All right, we're moving the goblin in. Yeah, I really think once you can actually move around properly, this uh, gauntlet isn't too bad. Like, I was taking a lot of damage just by... You know, essentially just walking into shots, especially with this whip, because this whip basically binds them all together. So if they have like a nice target to aim for like that, if you can't get out the way, you you're doomed. Now, I think, yeah, at the end of this, you actually have to fight the glass weaver themselves. <laughs> I don't think we're going to do very well during this. If I can wing my way through this, I'll be very, very happy. Pale Knights, do your thing. Okay, it's sending blue orbs. Here's the thing, right? I think... And I might be wrong about this. I think when I did this last time as well, I think this fight was broken. I don't think this fight was actually uh, working correctly. It was either that or I had like a very, very flashy weapon. So you couldn't really see what was going on. Because I don't remember blue balls being thrown around. You know, there's nothing of the sort. Oh my gosh, yes. I wanted to see if that would work, if the whip would actually pull the glass weaver down. This is a really cool little mini boss fight. I'm really growing to appreciate this mod on, on the replay. I mean, I loved it anyway, but I love it even more now. I really do. Here we go, Glassweaver. Congratulations, you destroyed many decades of my finest work. I should have really fought this through more. I was going to have those help you clear out the forge, but I'm sure you'll figure it out. Okay, cool. So he's going to give us the entrance to the Great Forge... Uh, and we're gonna sort that out. We have a key. I think my four, maybe five month break from this mod is gonna revitalize this area for me. Because I know if I was playing Starlight River all of the time, I think this is the area that wouldn't hold up as much. Only because it's like a little puzzle room. And, uh, and once you've figured out how the puzzles work, it probably loses a little bit of its, like, uh, its luster. So if you've not played Starlight River before, this first little puzzle involves these uh, blue cogs. So you can right click on them and uh, and change the size and you need to get all of them the right size to get the uh, the machine running. It's quite cool. I do like it. The thing about the cogs is they'll only spin if they're the correct size. So it's not too hard of a puzzle. So once you've got all the cogs spinning, uh, the door opens. I'm not talking about this too much only because I did this in a video recently. But out of the two puzzles, I think this one is my favorite, especially there's a little like alt path here where you can bounce this sword to here, then to here, and then you get stuck and you need to go, oh, I've got to go down here. I think that's quite clever. Like, I like this puzzle a lot. It's actually not as fiddly as I remember it being. Like, when I first did this puzzle, I found it a little broken, like a little annoying. Okay, well, it's done. I don't know when I finished it, but I finished it. It's complete. So what did we get? Well, the, the forge is working, which means we can descend down here. We, we get nothing yet. But I think this is where we get our first ability. There are some enemies around, but let's grab it. It's called the Forbidden Winds. It's so, so good, isn't it? Like, look at it. They've gone all out with this mod. So this is my little dash ability that you get. And then you use the dash ability to, like, break crystals and that. So you can, um, like, dash through this wall, for example, like that. And you can do it midair as well. You've got to wait for it to, to charge up. I think once we break through this door, uh, that is literally it. I don't think there's anything else to do here. Oh, this is cool. Crystal slimes. So I'm assuming to actually fight them. Yeah, you need to uh, whirlwind into them. Okay, so we break this and then this spawns in the altar. And this is the real, real flashy part of the mod. This is something which you will see in no other Terraria mod. That's why I call this one the most ambitious because... It's just, it's just so extra. Like, it's so cool. Okay, right. So, uh, we need to put something here to actually summon in the boss. Yeah, so we need ancient ceramic and vitric shards. And the vitric shards you get from uh, breaking the crystals with the uh, the little 
Uh, whirlwind ability. Ah, okay, right, cool. I was just about to Google this. Where do you get the uh, ancient ceramic from? You get it from enemies that are spawning around here, I think. Let me kill the sand viper. Did we get some more? We got some more. All right. How many do we need? Well, we only need five. Oh, it's, it's very cheap. It's, it's not an expensive recipe. Oh, oh, that's what you do with these. You just charge into them. So we got the defiled ankh. Cursed, your barrier protects against 25% less damage, plus 100% inoculation while barrier is alive, immunity to most debuffs while barrier is active, plus 40 max barrier, and we also got a flying carpet as well. That's cool. I've been walking past this chest for, uh, you know, a couple of hours now, not really knowing what to do. I was like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to, I'm going to dash into it and see what happens. And there we go. That's cool. So here we go. Now, this will probably be the first attempt of many. Uh, bear with me. Ceros, for me, is a pretty hard boss fight. Although, I'm quite excited to see what it's going to be like with uh, with summons. Mainly because it's the summons that are going to be doing the bulk of the damage. Now, uh, just in terms of this fight, uh, what I mostly remember is that there's a phase where we're meant to destroy... Uh, a crystal. So these little crystals will will kind of yeah. There you go. It's one of these. You're meant to dash into them using the uh, the whirlwind ability. Other than that, that's all I really remember, and I just remember it being hard. So I don't know if I can even use my little like uh, whip abilities. I don't think I can. So I think this is going to be a case of uh, definitely learning to dodge a little better. Um, oh gosh. <laughs> Well, like I say, it's the first of many. So I didn't even realize the materials we use for the echo chain, they can also be used for a new summoning weapon, which makes a lot of sense because I feel like my Pale Knights are not quite cutting it with a uh, Ceros. Haunted Dagger Staff. So it's 13 summon damage, 24 critical strike damage, summons haunted daggers embedding themselves in your foes. Change summon targets or whip them to violently tear the daggers from their flesh. That sounds grim, but also very cool. Uh, I shall be making it. So let's give this a go with our new summon. Now, I did test it on an enemy on the way down here, and it seems like you have to be quite involved with it. So what it will do is it will stick in the enemy like this, but you need to whip the enemy for it to actually do like its full maximum damage. So what I've done is I've got one of the daggers, and then I've also got one pale knight as well, and then I'm hoping I can like synergize them. Okay, I think this is the one. I think I'm doing it. Ceros, be prepared. I do think damage-wise, uh, a combination of these two summons is actually doing us pretty good. So we're doing a lot better on this fight. I actually feel like my damage is there. Obviously, you know, I had to dodge a little bit better. I was never going to win until I could uh, dodge this properly. But it is nice to know that my summons are actually doing... Uh, you know, a good bit of damage. While well, I'm doing all the work, zip zapping about. This is, oh God, it's so cool. This video, I, and I'm going to have to be really careful with how I edit this. Because this could easily be five hours of me just like gushing over Starlight River. Because that's all I've really done. All I've really done is go, oh, this boss, this boss is really cool. And it's not my, it's not my top tier commentary, but that's how the mod makes me feel. It's just, it's so refreshing. And, um, and yeah, replaying this has genuinely been such a treat. And I also think it's been special because my favorite part of Terraria by far is pre-hard mode. And Starlight River only takes place right now in pre-hard mode. So this has been a really good reason to just be like, James, we're playing pre-hard mode today. There's no expectations to do anything else. Okay, uh... Phase two? I kind of forgot it had a phase two. So what is this? There's a crystal up here. Do I need to smack the crystal? Oh, I, I think I, I think I butchered that a little bit. I thought I was doing all right until now. Now I don't think we're going to beat this at all. Oh, I love how it's like a, a vertical wall of flesh. Like somebody actually made it possible. I don't know if I'm meant to be smacking that crystal. I probably am. Listen, I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> I'm troubled by the fact that this fight's quite hard. Okay, here's the crystal. There you go. Yeah, you are meant to break it. Oh, there we go. Oh, I did it. I don't know if I'll <laughs> survive this one. Oh, gosh. This fight is just so good, isn't it? That was not too bad. I'm actually pretty proud I did that one. 
So we are getting close to the end here. Just got to remember to maybe move around. And, oh gosh, no, I'm butchering this. I've got to learn to avoid that attack because that is brutal. Oh my gosh, <laughs> for a pre-hard mode boss, a laser beam is, is wild, isn't it? But I do love how you're just forced to, to move around in this vicious circle in this arena. You don't get a lot of time to... Oh my gosh, we got so close then. Okay, I think we're almost done. Oh no, it's... it's please don't kill me. There we go. Wow, that fight is brutal. It's it's brutal. Starlight River. If this is a sign of things to come, this is going to be a hard, hard mod in the future. Very cool. Oh, I loved it. I've had such a good time today. Uh, yeah, I'm so glad I, I chose to revisit this mod. It's it's class. It's so good. What did we get in our treasure bag? It, it, it doesn't really matter too much. Uh, but I will be back in the future when they update this. I will definitely be back. Uh, oh, we got a we got a summoning weapon. The Magmite Vac Pack. 35 summon damage. Blasts out Magmites that stick to enemies and increases summon tag damage. Okay, let's see it. Oh, here we go. Oh, very cool. Very, very cool. Yeah, thanks for uh, joining me today. That was a lot of fun. Starlight River, uh, definitely worth the hype. I can't wait to see what sort of updates this team is going to do. And that's it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.